balanced view introduces us to our innate stability and our innate beneficial potency and um, our innate stability and our innate beneficial potency being innate have always been um, the case and um, knowing that that's the case uh, makes life um, extremely different from not knowing that that's the case. And so um, the most common way that we usually suggest to, to check this in our own experience and recognize it uh, in our own experience is to stop thinking just for a brief moment and recognize that the alertness the aware quality, the cognizant nature of your mind that allows you to experience everything that you experience right now, that subsumes everything that you hear, everything that you see, everything that you think, everything that you emote, everything that you sense. All of that is um, happening because there is a naked cognizance at the basis of it all. So um, we can stop thinking and recognize that that's, that that's the case. That's why we're aware of anything. And um, what's also clear when we take a moment to recognize that, we call it open intelligence usually. The open intelligence of mind <coughs> Um, what's also clear in that short moment is that that cognizance is always present, <laughs> even when we are thinking or distracted from it or not specifically recognizing that it's the case. <coughs> so the stability of mind or the stability of uh, open intelligence uh, is similar to the stability of a mirror in relation to its reflections. So irrespective of what reflections are in the mirror, or in the case of the mind, irrespective of what experiences are in the mind, the mind itself, or the mirror itself, always remain lucid, uh, stable, clear, brilliant. And potent. Maybe not so much in the case of the mirror, but certainly in the case of our mind. So um, it's powerful to um, take short moments to recognize open intelligence in this way um, and to really become convinced through our own experience, not because anybody's told us that it's the case. Um, that, wow, it really is true that my mind is, is innately stable. It doesn't matter what happens in my mind or in my experience. The nature of my mind always remains stable. The clear light of mind is always on. Uh, whether we're awake, dreaming or sleeping, our mind actually is always awake. The light of mind is always on. And that is the context, or that is the <coughs> that is the place in which our whole life passes, from birth, life to death. The whole thing happens within the stability of our own mind, the timeless, free, stable mind that pervades everything. So, um, one thing to clarify about this is that stopping thinking in, it, in itself is not, is not a goal of any sort. <laughs> so, to be without thoughts, for example, is not in any way better to, to have, uh, better than having thoughts. 
It's just that most people find it easier to recognize open intelligence uh, by stopping thinking for a brief moment, just to take that moment to recognize what's at the basis of all experience. But it's not that we need to try to try to not be thinking. So um, we can also recognize open intelligence while thinking. Um, so that's the um, that's the important point is to recognize uh, recognize open intelligence for short moments, whether thinking or th or not thinking. So stopping thinking for a short moment for most people can make that easier. But um, like you said, uh, you can't always stop thinking, even if you even if you want to. <laughs> does, that, does everybody have that experience? <laughs> yeah. So um, whatever's going on in our mind or as our mind, thinking, not thinking, and whatever other things exist. Um, <laughs> I'm sure there's lots of things I just can't think of any of them now. <laughs> um, uh, just like a mirror uh, doesn't resist any of its reflections, it doesn't try to stop any of them expressing themselves, it also doesn't tr try to stop any of them uh, dissolving or going away. The mirror is impartial. It has an unconditional relationship with its reflections. It doesn't have prejudices regarding its reflections, wanting some to be there and wanting others not to be there. And actually... Um, the natural state for us is the same. When we make no effort whatsoever to control the contents of our mind or the expression of our mind, we see that it's like that. That our mind has never for one moment been in any threat from any of its own appearances. Therefore, there was never any need to control the way we feel the way we think, the way we emote, etc. So, it becomes clearer and clearer to us that essentially what, what suffering is is the erroneous belief that we need to control our mind and its contents or its expression. Because when we um, have that erroneous belief, then we are entrapping ourselves in an endless busyness without any reward at the end of it. Because our mind doesn't play ball. <laughs> it doesn't um, have any regard for what we've learned it should be like. Our mind is wild and free. <laughs> and uh, when we take a short moment to recognize the innate stability of mind amidst everything we're experiencing in any given moment, we experience directly the relief of no longer trying to control the way we feel. And that relief is a very powerful insight, a very powerful experience. <coughs> because when we feel relieved, particularly simultaneous to experiencing negative states, then we see it's like a revolutionary insight you know, for a personal life. Because we see that our relief or our peace of mind doesn't depend on not having negative experiences. And this is such liberation because we've never managed to not have negative experiences. 
So to know that we don't have to try anymore and that our relief and stability and connection with ourselves and others, all of these things do not depend on having certain experiences as opposed to certain other experiences. So it is such a relief to not need to control our mind anymore. And uh, we recommend to, to try that for short moments, repeated many times, whenever it naturally occurs to us. So whenever we catch ourselves fretting, worrying, perpetuating a charge of hope and fear, controlling, manipulating how we feel, when we recognize that we're doing that, then we can completely relax that effort and experiment with allowing it to be exactly as it is, not resisting anything, not forcing anything, not indulging anything, not trying to get rid of anything, And um, it's such a powerful way of respecting our dignity as beings that are inseparable from the intelligence of nature itself to um, no longer disrespect nature by assuming that it got it wrong with this thought that I just had, or that thought that I had yesterday, or uh, grief, or longing, or desire, or fear, or dread. It's Monday tomorrow, so maybe dread of work, or um, (coughs) none of these things are a hurdle to complete peace. They're all subsumed by complete peace, the complete peace of our of our mind itself. So, um, in short moments, many times we become more and more assured of the nature of mind, and um, in balanced view, there's um, a support system doing that. So one I've spoken about is short moments, and then there's uh, availability of a teacher, uh, the teaching itself, which clarifies the practice and clarifies the nature of mind repeatedly in millions of different ways, and uh, the community. So these four things are called the four mainstays, and um, they're completely available to all of us and also provided by all of us, which is nice. (laughs) Um, And it's uh, just an offering, uh, which everybody's welcome to use to whatever extent they feel inclined to.